Hey everyone, welcome back to another video presenting a stamp from the October 22 release from Technique Junkies. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to be using this beautiful Oh Come Let Us Adore Him stamp for this. And I have some cutouts from my stash that we'll be working with, but we're going to start out by making a background here. So I'm going to grab some of my Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock, wipe that little debris off of there, and I'm going to grab some of my Distress Oxides. And I'm going to start out with Uncharted Mariner, Villainous Potion, Wilted Violet, and a little bit of Prize Ribbon. So I'm going to start in with Uncharted Mariner, and what I'm going for is kind of a sky that's going to be um, kind of oh, cohesive with the um, holographic paper that I'm going to be using. So I'll just put dabs here and there. There's nothing easier than making a night sky um, with Distress Oxides. So next I'll go in with my Villainous Potion and just kind of fill in some of the spaces. Just little splotches. Um, the Bristol Smooth blends does really well blending with oxides. So next I'll go ahead and I will go in with the prize ribbon here and fill in the blanks. Just kind of sort of blending those together ish. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. And the bottom's going to be, a lot of it's going to be covered, so I'm not concerned with getting too many colors at the bottom. Then I'll go ahead and I will go in with the um, Dusty Concord and finish it off. Just fill in some of those empty spaces. So it's kind of a sunsetty, purpley night cloud situation. It doesn't look like much, but you'll see. It works out great. So I'll go ahead and clean off my mat here so I don't spread ink everywhere. And then I'm going to take my little fan brush and a little bit of water. And I just like to spray the water down onto my work mat, get a nice puddle going, get my fan brush wet, and then I'm just going to tap it onto my surface. Um, I don't want a bunch of big blobs because this would be representative of kind of stars. So we'll be lifting the ink. I'll go ahead and grab a paper towel, let that sit for a second, and then dab up the rest. Let me get my water out of the way before I have an accident with it. <laughs> and then I'll just dab to pull off that ink. And there I've got myself a super simple starry sky kind of a spacey night. So I do like to make sure that this is nice and dry. So I like to run it through my mink. So I turn my mink on to the highest setting and I'll let that heat up. And once that's heated up, I'll just put my um, card inside of a piece of paper. And what I'm trying to do is get that paper to absor absorb any of the moisture um, because I'm going to be heat embossing in the next step and I want to be able to not have my embossing powder stick to wet ink. So it's just kind of a quick shortcut. Sometimes I run it through once, sometimes I run it through twice, but I'm going to test it and here we go. Does it stick? No, it does not. We are dry. It's that quick. Well, of course, you know, I cut out the whole part where I was heating up my mink, but <laughs> you know. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to five and a quarter by four. So I've got my edges trimmed here. And then I've got my little pieces here. And this is just a die cut from my stash, one of my favorite wise men. And, um, my trick here is my shadow layer is going to actually be a highlight later, layer, and that is with some silver holographic paper that I got from Simon Says Stamps. And this is, of course, my artist tack, which first use is sometimes hard to peel apart for me, but yeah, I manage. And I'm going to lay my wise men down in here. And nope, I need to make sure they're all completely in there. And then I'm just going to take my bone folder and make sure all those sticky dots get stuck to it. Open it up. And then I like to curve my paper and let it roll off so I don't accidentally peel, you know, roll up my 
die cut and I'm going to lay these directly on top of each other just a little bit at a time until I've got it all lined up. Sometimes that little staff doesn't like to line up so I just use my tweezers to kind of squeeze it together and just kind of push it down to make sure that it's all stuck together and then I'm going to take this same piece and I'm going to put it in another place here in the artist tack and give it a good rub and what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it onto that holographic paper. So what it does is it gives you a really cool highlight as if they were lit up by the moon or whatever light source there is. And just make sure everything's good and stuck down. And then all I'm going to need to do is trim this. And I'm going to just use my trimmer and trim it down. I'm just eyeballing it, trust me on that. You know, I need some bottom, of course. And then this is going to go at the bottom of my card and see how they look lit up. So I'm going to grab my stamp platform, and boy, it's a hot mess right now, I'm telling you. I'm going to lay this down in here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the little e excess edges off there. And I'm going to lay this where I want it, and then I'm going to grab my stamp. Well, I'm going to grab actually my piece of acetate first, and I'm going to lay it under there. Forgot to turn my computer down, sorry about that. What I'm doing here is just checking for placement on my stamp, and I do realize that part of that stamp will get covered, but that's okay. You can make your paper bigger if you want. You want you can make it to fill a whole card, but it I it's still you can still see what it says and it looks beautiful, so I'm happy with it. Happy with the placement, so I'm going to go ahead and put my magnets down. And I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. This is the Rabbit Hole Designs one. And I'm going to use some of my Versa, Versa Mark ink. And I've got here, I've got white and holographic embossing powder. So we're going to do two layers of embossing. The first layer is going to be white. Because if I were to do plain holographic, you wouldn't be able to see the sentiment. So I want to do it down over another color that you can see very well after it's been heat embossed. So I'll go ahead and put the white embossing powder on there. And go ahead and put this away right away because the next thing I'm going to be using is my holographic. And I'll go ahead and heat emboss this. And it looks great just like that. You can leave it like that if you want to. But we're just going to give it that extra touch um, by embossing it again. Now the pitfall of embossing twice is that your paper will get pretty warpy. Um, and you'll see I struggle with it and I decided not to cut that out. Um, just so you can kind of learn from my mistakes. So now I'm going in with the holographic here. Tapping it off and I don't mind if there's a little excess on the car cause it, card because it gives it that little extra sparkle. Um, and I'm not going to be doing any more stamping or coloring. So I'll go ahead and heat emboss the um, sparkly. And it's kind of hard to see it on camera, but it's definitely holographic. And these guys are going to go here, and then, then my star is going to go. And I'm here's me working with my paper, trying to get it to bend properly. And I, I am going to mat this in some of the holographic, but first I want to kind of darken down the edges here. So I'm just taking my VersaFine Claire and just going along the edges to kind of create sort of a vignette. I'm not too worried about the bottom edge because, again, that's going to be covered. There we go. And that's just going to create a little bit of that more attention to the center and what's going on with that beautiful sentiment. The, the handwriting there is just gorgeous. And this is that holographic paper and it's kind of a, it's not like a shiny like mirror surface, um, but it is silver holographic. So I'm going to glue this down onto that piece of silver holographic paper. And this is where you're gonna see me struggle because that page is bent and glue does not like sticking to that paper. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I keep pressing down and it keeps popping back up. Normally this glue grabs right away. So this is my reptile adhesive. But it's just not wanting to grab. That paper's wanting to fight me. So I'm going to try and add a little bit of glue in here. See if that helps at all. 
and there's a little spot on top that needs extra glue and I can see already this is just not going to work it's not going to want to stick I am going to lay something flat on here and hope for the best and hope it sticks down and I'll walk away from it while it's kind of getting some weight on it and I'll be right back okay so we see how we want that to go and I can see that it's still being warpy um, and not sticking and I can see the whole thing's not sticking so I'm gonna switch gears here and I'm gonna use double-sided tape and I know double-sided tape will work so we'll just do the little trick where you put it all the way around each edge and um, put a couple of pieces in the middle and then you basically bend forward the four edges so that you can kind of get it down onto the um, onto the matting layer easily and I just use my bone folder to kind of smooth that out okay we've got all our tape on so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the middle pieces off and then I'm just gonna pull these corners and fold them down fold I say fold And this will take care of it. It's an extra step that you can do to kind of help line things up. And I decide that I want to um, have just a very thin sliver of it. So I put it more at the top and the um, top and the left. And then I'll trim down the other two sides so that it's all even. That's what I'm trying to make you believe. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and glue down my wise man. Pretty simple. And you could use a stencil. You don't have to use anything. You could use mountains, trees. Um, if you have a manger scene. But this is what I have. And I bought this this year. So I intend to use it a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down the star. This came with it. And this is also the silver holographic paper that I backed them with. And that, the, that it is matted on. And there we can see it's all nice and stuck together. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on a card base. And let's see, do I want to put it on a navy card base? And I find out here that all my card bases are set for top folding. <laughs> and that's okay. You can still use it. But I decide that I want to use white. I did not cut out any black card bases. You could do it on a black. You could do it on a white. You could do it on a purple. Whatever. <laughs> Just do it. And that I will use my glue for because that, um, that holographic paper is craft on the other side. And this is how easy and quickly this card comes together. And I wish that you could see the holographic sparkle on the uh, sentiment. Again, it's really hard to catch on camera. But hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Bye.